We're getting an update on two high-profile celebrities who are accused of sexual misconduct. Let's get over to Raquel Villanueva. She has news at the moment. That's right, Jeff. Mario Batali is facing a criminal charge for an alleged groping incident back in 2017. The celebrity chef allegedly kissed and groped a woman while she was taking a selfie with him at one of his restaurants, and he'll be in court tomorrow in Boston. In the meantime, motivational speaker Tony Robbins is responding to sexual misconduct allegations against him. As four more women come forward, with accusations. Listen. And I'm not perfect. I never claim to be. I'm, I'm perfectly committed to growing and helping as many people as I possibly can. But I've never claimed to be perfect. And if there's anything I've ever said or ever done that sincerely, if it offended anybody, hurt anybody's feelings, or they felt anything of that nature, just didn't support you, I apologize. It's certainly not my intent. And I'll keep you updated on both cases. Thanks, Raquel. You know, for me, um, obviously, I'm a fan of Tony Robbins, but if he did do something wrong, I don't know if I'd be a fan of him anymore. Right now, these are accusations, and I think he's handling this very well. He's coming out, he's saying, I'm, I'm sorry if I did do something, let's make amends, let's do something. People are criticizing how he apologized now. Had he not apologized, we'd be criticizing him for not apologizing. So I don't know what the right answer is when you get these accusations as a person. What's the right answer in a situation like this? I think we're all trying to figure out what the right answer is. And I think each individual case is handled a little differently, whether that's fair or not. Right. With Tony Robbins, I think the issue is the fact that he's a motivational speaker, which means that his the message is the most important. How the audience is deciphering the message is if he gets too into the message, all of his affairs over here, then is he an effective motivational mm. speaker? And that's his issue. Uh, Erica, you hit it on the head. It's like, ev I never thought about that. Everyone is kind of handled differently. Do we go back and retroactively punish people? Do you lose all your restaurants? Do you lose your reputation? What if we had done that with Michael Vick? He did maybe, uh, according to a lot of Americans, one of the most egregious things that you could do with the dog fighting. That was 10 years ago? Since then, almost on a weekly basis, he's been going around the country talking to communities where dogfighting happens a lot right. and, set, and, and, and writing that ship. So what if we had just obliterated his, his, uh, his image and never, act like he never existed? We would have 10 years less of people being educated. So do we want to destroy people? Do we want to erase them like they never existed? Or do we want to provide them a pathway right. back? But like you said, Jeff, if he goes, I think I might have done this. He'll get killed. Right. So then how do you admit, like, I kind of messed up. I want to fix this. Show me a way without exposing your neck and possibly being attacked more. Yeah, I think the, the first step is getting to the bottom of it. Why are these women saying that? What happened? What went down? Being more clear on what happened, and then the apology comes, or before or after that. And, that, you know, and then you would start building the ladder from there. Like, right now, these accusations, I don't know if they're true or not. I don't want to take away from anything that happened to these women, if it happened to these women, but I don't know where to go now, because this is happening no more does. and more. Yeah, I mean, I think there's different routes, like you guys were saying. I, I always appreciate when one of the people speaks to the people that are accusing them privately. I think that really makes a big difference. Instead of a, if I did something wrong but to in offend law, you. But in a court of law, you definitely cannot do that. You, you can't contact. I understand. Yeah, I no understand way. that. But, 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 but to me, if he said, hey, I've made some people uncomfortable. I've got to take a look at myself and motivate myself. That, to me, is better than a conditional apology of, if I did this, then I'm sorry. That always rubs me the wrong way. I know it's, too, no, but that's how the country is. We're all yeah. on different I know areas. it's detailed. It's almost like a lot of these situations, though, it's almost like a plea deal. Yeah. Like, you're told this is wrong. You can decide, okay, I, I'm going to rectify this and I'm going to make it right, right in that moment. Or you could decide to get on your high horse right. and use your ego and decide that, no, you actually have it wrong. Then it goes to the next step exactly. and the plea deal's off the table. So now you have a public thing. More accusers come forward. Now you're in shark-infested territory yeah. mm. because you have decided that this one person or this one allegation to begin with wasn't a big enough deal. Right. So now it was the catalyst for the floodgates to open and you're screwed. So I would strongly suggest the next time someone tells someone anyone that you've made them feel uncomfortable or you felt they felt like they were violated by you perhaps you listen and look and into see yourself. it through yeah. because the sharks are going to come yeah, yeah. I agree with that well, it's, a, it's a mountain we're gonna have to climb in the future transition I was <laughs> saying, if you transition to the story are you, you are a professional <laughs> just now to 